in a peaceful residential neighborhood of San Francisco, California, where streets wind through breathtaking views and picturesque homes, the life of a young couple seemed serene and untroubled. Eva and Lucas, who had been living together for about six years, had shared joys, plans, and daily routines, building what seemed to be a strong relationship, or so it appeared. Lately, however, Eva had begun to notice changes in Lucas's behavior. Once affectionate and open, he had become distant, reserved, and at times almost cold. One evening, when they were having dinner together, Eva decided to use Lucas's phone to send herself some photos from his brother's recent wedding, captured in moments of happiness and carefree joy. While navigating through the apps in search of the gallery, her eyes landed on an unfamiliar icon, X Browser. Driven by curiosity, she asked Lucas what it was, but his reaction was unexpectedly harsh and disproportionate. He had snatched the phone from her hands with a brusque gesture, warning her never to touch it again. Eva was taken aback. Initially, she thought it might be a dating app or something similar, but the reality she was about to discover was infinitely darker. A few days later, Lucas forgot his phone at home while he was out grocery shopping. Moved by a mix of curiosity and anxiety, Eva opened X Browser, and at first did not understand exactly what it was. As she delved deeper, she realized it was the dark web. She had heard about it in college, because some classmates often talk about this shadowy side of the internet. Those stories came flooding back and helped her understand what she was seeing. Scrolling through the browser tabs, however, what she saw left her speechless. Dozens of tabs open with detailed discussions on how to murder one's partner without leaving a trace. Eva's world collapsed at that moment. Lucas's strange behavior over the past few months, his coldness, his avoidance, it all now made a terrible sense. Panicked and desperate, Eva fled their home, running to the nearest police station to report what she had discovered. The police acted immediately. That same evening, Lucas was interrogated, and both his phone and computer were searched. The evidence was overwhelming. Lucas was indeed planning Eva's murder. The exchanges on X Browser with an anonymous user revealed meticulous advice on how to carry out the act and create poisons with substances easily found at home. During the interrogation, Lucas confessed to his sinister plan. The reason? Eva wanted to get married, dreaming of a shared life full of bounds and promises, but Lucas wanted no such deep commitment. However, he had already been planning to leave her, but Eva, in love and trusting in their relationship, did not want to accept the end of their union. Lucas was arrested, leaving the San Francisco community in a state of shock and disbelief. The story of Eva and Lucas became a cautionary tale about the shadows that can hide behind the facades of normality, the importance of listening to one's instincts, and the need to pay attention to often overlooked signals that those closest to us can send. In a quiet suburb of Portland, Oregon, where homes blend harmoniously with the lush nature that characterizes the state, Nathan's life seemed to proceed without a hitch. Nathan, a computer programmer with a passion for mystery and the unknown, had always had an unsatiable curiosity for the darker corners of the internet. His obsession with the dark web began as a simple hobby, a way to explore the hidden depths of cyberspace beyond the restrictions of the surface web. One night, as the city slept enveloped in autumnal fog, Nathan stumbled upon a dark web forum that promised access to a collection of unique experiences for those brave enough to explore it. Driven by curiosity, Nathan decided to dive into this unknown world, unaware of the consequences his choice would bring. The dark web, populated by hackers and unscrupulous individuals, easily traced his computer's IP address and, in turn, his home address. In the following days, he began receiving strange anonymous packages, small, seemingly meaningless objects, cryptic photographs of familiar-looking places, and letters written in code. Each item appeared to be part of a macabre puzzle that Nathan was forced to solve. His once calm and predictable life transformed into a sleepless nightmare, where the distinction between reality and the dark world of the dark web became increasingly blurred. Nathan realized too late that the forum was a front for a cult 
operating in the shadows, dedicated to dark practices and sinister rituals. The forum's users had been selected to become part of a perverse experiment aimed at testing the limits of human fear, manipulating their lives through hidden signals and subliminal messages scattered in the packages. One evening, as he tried to decipher the latest message received, Nathan heard noises coming from his garden. Looking out the window, he saw hooded figures gathered around a symbol traced on the lawn, illuminated by the dim of the moon. In that moment, he understood that the cult had crossed the digital barrier, invading the physical world to complete their ritual with him as the final sacrifice. Desperate and with no way out, Nathan contacted the police, but the communication seemed intercepted, leaving him isolated and vulnerable. In the darkest hours, before the cult members could reach him, he decided to use his programming skills to trace their origin on the dark web and send an SOS to a group of ethical hackers he had heard of. The hackers responded to his call, launching a digital offensive against the cult, exposing their identities and locations to the authorities. When the police arrived, they found Nathan unconscious, surrounded by the remains of what appeared to be a disrupted ritual. In the trial that followed, a network of crimes and mysteries that extended well beyond the city of Portland came to light, involving individuals around the world, lured and then trapped by the same curiosity that had led Nathan to the brink of ruin. Nathan, though safe, was never the same again. His foray into the dark web had left deep scars, a constant reminder of the dark depths lurking behind the computer screen. On a cold autumn evening in Detroit, Michigan, a city known for its resilience and rich industrial history, Alex, an engineering student, was browsing the dark web in search of study material. Alex had a particularly strong passion for theology since childhood. He had heard rumors of hidden forums discussing the so-called Apocrypha, texts that were excluded from the Bible because they were deemed non-canonical. These texts are available on the regular internet accessible to everyone, but there was talk that the dark web contained other stories hard to find elsewhere. Driven by curiosity and the pressure of upcoming exams, Alex decided to search for them hoping to gain an edge in his studies. His search led him to an anonymous seller who promised exactly what he was looking for. However, there was a catch. The notes could not be sent digitally or by mail. If he wanted them, he would have to go in person to an old abandoned railway station, a forgotten relic on the city's outskirts, to pick them up. Despite the seller's insistence that this was the only way to ensure the anonymity and safety of both parties, Alex sensed the risk of a trap, yet curiosity overcame caution, and he decided to proceed, taking a second phone with GPS activated. In case he needed help, arriving at the station under the dark veil of night, Alex's heart pounded wildly, every shadow seeming to hide dangers. He was approached by a girl who presented herself with a disarming smile and handed him an envelope containing the notes. Her apparent innocence and the normalcy of the exchange momentarily lowered Alex's guard. Almost immediately after the exchange, he was struck from behind and lost consciousness. Upon waking, he found himself tied to a chair in an abandoned building near the station, with a camera pointed straight at him. The realization that he had fallen into a well-orchestrated trap hit him hard. The girl was merely a diversion, part of a larger plan to lure him there. In front of the camera, a computer-distorted voice explained that he would become the unwilling star of a dark web broadcast, where viewers would decide his fate through voting. The terror he felt at that moment was indescribable. A mix of anger, desperation, and disbelief at how a simple search for notes could have led him to this point. Fortunately, the second phone with the GPS activated was his salvation. He had shared his location with a trusted friend before leaving insisting to keep an eye on his path in case something went wrong. When Alex did not respond to contact attempts after the scheduled meeting, the friend immediately alerted the police. Officers arrived just in time, freeing Alex and arresting his captors, before they could harm him or broadcast anything. The girl and two men were identified as part of a gang exploiting the dark web to organize kidnappings and illegal broadcasts. Alex emerged from the experience profoundly changed, with a newfound awareness of the dangers lurking in the depths of the web. 
His story served as a warning to other students and internet users about the need to always be vigilant and cautious, especially when navigating the dark and unexplored waters of the digital world. In a quiet suburb, far from the hustle and bustle of big cities, lived Ethan, a young man whose life had been marked by a series of unfortunate decisions. Unemployed and drowning in debt, Ethan found himself facing a moral crossroads when he discovered a way to make money quickly on the dark web. Through dubious contacts, Ethan began selling gruesome photos gathered from the darkest corners of his city, quickly becoming a sought-after supplier for a niche audience seeking increasingly extreme content. Initially, Ethan justified his actions as a temporary means to escape his financial predicament. However, the line between what was acceptable and what was not began to blur as he delved deeper into that world. The turning point came when he was commissioned a task that surpassed any previous moral boundary, to harm a family member, record the act, and share it on the dark web. The request shook Ethan to his core. The realization of the horror of his actions and the company he kept hit him with devastating force. For the first time, he saw clearly the evil he was spreading and the danger he had put himself and his loved ones in. Consumed by remorse and fear, Ethan decided to reject the assignment, hoping to close that dark door and protect his family from the threat he had unwittingly brought upon them. But it wasn't that simple. The sect behind the dark web request did not accept his refusal. Threatened with increasingly explicit messages, Ethan was informed that if he did not carry out the order, they would take matters into their own hands, harming his family in his stead. Paralyzed by fear but determined not to give in, Ethan sought a way to escape the grip he had found himself in. One night, as tension in Ethan's home was palpable, the opportunity that the sect had announced presented itself. They knocked on the door, calmly asking to speak. But when Ethan opened it, it was clear their intentions were anything but peaceful. As they attempted to force their way in, Ethan and his family defended themselves as best they could, with him shouting for his relatives to call the police. Fortunately, Ethan had informed the local authorities of the threats received, although he initially omitted details about his involvement in the dark web. In the days leading up to the attack, the police had increased surveillance in the neighborhood as a precaution. When the assault on Ethan's home began, Two patrol cars were already nearby and responded promptly. The confrontation that followed was chaotic and violent. An officer was injured in the action, but the police managed to arrest the attackers before they could harm Ethan and his family. The event marked a crucial turning point in Ethan's life, forcing him to confront the consequences of his actions and the need to take responsibility for his choices. After that night, Ethan cooperated with authorities to dismantle the network he had supplied content to hoping to redeem himself and protect others from meeting his fate. In a small college town nestled in the hills of Northern California, Valerie, a modern literature student, was searching for material for her thesis on censorship and freedom of expression on the internet. During her research, she accidentally stumbled upon the dark web, intrigued by the promise of accessing unfiltered information free from government censorship. Unbeknownst to her, that simple click was the beginning of a nightmare. Shortly after her foray into the dark web, Valerie's computer began to behave strangely. Files opening and closing on their own, the webcam activating without reason, and sudden slowdowns. It was clear something was amiss, but Valerie could not fathom the extent of the problem until she received a cryptic email. The message claimed that malware installed during her browsing had scanned her entire PC history, threatening to reveal all her contacts to the explicit videos she had watched unless she paid a ransom. Engulfed by shame and panic, Valerie felt like she was enveloped in fog. Although the videos were nothing excessively shameful, the thought of friends, family, and professors receiving that kind of information terrified her. Feeling trapped, she agreed to pay the ransom. Following the instructions she provided, she was to leave the cache near an abandoned cottage on the outskirts of town. With her heart racing, Valerie ventured to the designated spot at dusk, hoping it would be the end of her nightmare. However, as she approached the cottage, she glimpsed through an open window what seemed to be lifeless hanging bodies. Terror struck her forcefully, prompting her to flee towards safety and head straight towards the police station to report what she had seen. 
But when the police arrived at the location with Valerie, they found nothing to corroborate her story. The cottage was empty, with no trace of bodies or recent activity. The police, frustrated and skeptical, accused Valerie of fabricating the entire story, both the threat and the macabre discovery. Desperate, Valerie attempted to show evidence of the chat on her PC, but that too had disappeared, erased by the same malware that had violated her privacy. For a while, everything seemed to return to normal, until she received a message on her phone, an ultimatum warning her not to report anything further and to pay the ransom in Bitcoin. This time, Valerie acted with greater cunning. She recorded the conversation on her phone and brought it to the police as undeniable proof. With this new evidence, the police launched a more thorough investigation, but the culprits remained in the shadows, skilled at hiding their digital traces.